Leves. The benefits of having a social district, one, you can obviously promote it. It helps to increase tourism. Uh, it provides for a very broad cultural existence. Destination downtown, again, going back to the whole concept of Main Street. Uh, increased dollars and tax revenue. Uh, and opportunity for new places to come in, which we have a new bar coming in right next to us. One of the more interesting facts that I found in studying the places where this already exists. Number eight, people drink more responsibly when they are on the move versus sitting down at a bar and being stacked, where they can get up, they can move around, they can visit the different shops, they can visit the different restaurants. They're not going to a set location. They actually drink less because they're moving. And they don't have the problems that you would think you would have. Uh, if you look at the experiences from other locations, not only here, but Mississippi, Alabama, Ohio, Louisiana, Georgia, Oregon, Missouri, Nevada, Florida, and cities here in North Carolina, they've not seen really any increase in criminal activity. I figure my voice is loud enough to carry. <laughs> um, but they're not reporting an increase, and in fact, in most places, they're recording a decrease in crime because people are drinking more responsibly and there's more people out there. Uh, and talking with Michael, it's funny because people get stupid and what do they do? They get recorded on camera now. It's not just the cameras that are in cities. So, all of these things help. Virtually every district reports an increase in both taxes and merchant revenue. And by starting with the trial period and hitting a specific geographical location, most places have actually expanded it where they can walk even further and do more. These are a list where you can go and talk to your fellow commissioners, but this is North Carolina. These are cities that have already introduced this and are working with this program and are having tremendous success. There are a number of things that we, we will need to do by designating the area. The businesses will have to have special cups made. We're aware of this and the people that I've talked to are fine with that. The real impetus driving me to come here, because I try to stay out of the political environment now. I like being a bartender. We had our ALE inspection. In fact, a large number of us all got inspected roughly in the same period of time. And in every case, an ALE officer brought up this because there was an ALE officer downtown on New Year's Day. And people had open cups. 
The one officer stated, I could have counted at least 2,000 infractions that I could have charged for. So not only are they charging the person carrying the cup, but they're going to go back to the business and also find us for something that happens regularly down here with open container. What this does is puts into place the ability for people to do what they have already been doing here for years and avoids, I hate to put it this way, the political push for revenue for areas that don't have it and the politics that go along with that. <coughs> this way, we're ahead of the game. ALE has given us what I feel a warning. As a former federal officer who has worked in that environment, often we talk to each other in vague sense saying, you should consider this, or oh, I see you got this passed. And I played ignorant and said I really haven't had a chance, but yes, I have talked to commissioners in the past. Well, if it isn't passed, you probably want to get this done. Um, for me, I'm going to follow to the letter of the law they are going to hold me to a higher standard. This will allow us, all of us, Poor Richards, Lost Colony, the distillery, to do what we've been doing without the ramifications of penalties. And we're aware of the costs that we're going to have, and I'm not aware of anybody having a pushback on that. At this point, I have to leave it to you because it is the town that has to file with ABC to become a social district. And Mr. Gallup, you'll be able to address that further on the legal side. Me not practicing in North Carolina, I don't want to go there. And with that, I am going to leave you with this to ponder if you have questions, come on into New Vines, and I'm happy to talk. I have an event going on in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to meet with you all and bring this up. Right, thanks, Gary. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Mr. Mayor, um, the next presentation is a presentation by Mr. Peter Thompson from Harbor Towns, Inc. Um, and I, th I think we worked out our technical error. We can just give um, Carl just a second to pull up their PowerPoint presentation.
Well, congratulations, guys. I was sweating here. Um, Mr. Mayor, Councilors, Dickerson, thank you for inviting me to present to you. My name is Peter Thompson. I'm a member in the, of the board of um, Harbor Towns Incorporated. This is a private, nonprofit corporation, 501c3, uh, designed for economic development in the Albemarle and the North, Northeastern North Carolina region. Um, the idea we're based on today has been around for about 30 years, and that is to connect the towns with passenger crafts of some kind. Uh, all the data that we have, and we're, our, our chairman is um, Chairman Nick Dido from, from Keenan Flagler, so he likes data a lot, uh, is that towns on both sides connected by, to other towns gain economic benefit. It's really almost that simple. So this, this idea of connecting these towns has been around. Nothing ever happened. And then what happened was the ferry from Hatteras to Ocracoke. And the man who was behind that ferry was Representative Ed Goodwin. Ed Goodwin saw how that made economic benefit to both sides. And everybody said when that ferry was that a walk-on, walk-off ferry would never work. Well, it works terrifically, as you probably know. Um, and more than just the people being there, it brought entrepreneurs uh, and new businesses to both sides. With that, and with the data gathered for 30 years of research in this, Mr. Goodwin and the um, Speaker of the House put together a bill that got $5.5 million for a project uh, mm -hmm. to find out whether this really works in a large pond. That pond's called the Elmwell Sound and the Outer Banks. Well, we had a heck of a time just finding the kind of boat that could actually work there. Um, we're not talking about your 200 passenger ferry here because our, the towns in the Alamo are too small for that. Um, what we're talking about is something between a water taxi and a, and a very small ferry. And the question was, how with the chop, if, if, if you all are boaters, you know when you're out in the sound, it is not necessarily a nice place to be. It, uh, and because of the shallow water, the chop comes up. So what would a small boat do in that kind of chop? Also, the towns are fairly far apart. You're about 37 miles from um, Albemarle Plantation. You're about 42 miles from Elizabeth City, about 65 miles from Edenton. So how could we work that? We needed a boat that could, first of all, take that chop comfortably, and then secondly, get from point to point pretty quickly. And we started looking around for it, and nobody made it. So that was exciting to find out. Um, we started looking at the kind of hull that could do that. And we, found, and we found the kind of water that we get here in the Albemarle Sound in uh, West Florida, where it's shallow, but there's still that chop from the bottom because of it. And we found that the kind of boat that was needed was what we call a high sue cat, that is a hydrofoil supported catamaran, and you're going to see some samples of it. So we found that the boat builder of these high suit cats down in Florida, which were little, was actually Smoky Mountain Jet Boats in, of all places, Brightson City, North Carolina. So we came back home, we found a marine architect, and we're building these boats. The two are being built. Let me see if I got this right. I messed up on everything else I did. Um, which button do I, do I do that? There we are. So the, this is a rendition of, the, of, of what the high suit cat will look like. It'll transport 30 passengers at about 33 miles an hour. It, 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 at dock, it has a draft of three feet. Running, it has a draft of 10 inches. Now. This is about all I know technically about it. So I brought along our senior captain, Tex Gallup. So if you have any questions about anything technical, 
Um, please, please direct it to text because this is about it for me. But here's what it looks like in the rendition. It's made of aluminum. It has two 600 horsepower Cummins engines in it and, and jet powers. It's jet powered, two jet uh, Franklin jets running it. And I thought you might be interested in taking a look at what's happening right now. This is what she looks like. You notice there's going to be this down towards the bottom there's going to be a foil that will lift up, lift it up out of the water. This is when it was building upside down and this is when we turned it over which was a pretty exciting day. Um, nobody had done this before up there so it was kind of exciting. Now this is a, a, an American passenger vessel, so the Coast Guard inspects every weld, every wire, everything. In fact, the weld inspection took five days, so that's how careful we are. And that's kind of a classy picture. Along with this, we bought a 100 passenger dinner boat, and it's going to be available for not just parties, but for full dinners. It can handle on excursions about 153 people. And for dinner, about 90. It's got a wide open top deck, so I'll show you that in a bit. But this is what's interesting to me, and I don't know, I don't want to run on too long for you, but the way this is done is they make the design, they, they, they create a CAD out of the design. The CAD is sent to Louisiana to the aluminum manufacturer there. He actually cuts the pieces out to five one thousandths of an inch and then it's sent up to um, Bryson City, North Carolina where it's lasered, laser welded together and it's quite a process. That's, that's the dinner boat which we just, just bought. It is now being refitted. It's in dry dock in New Jersey. And uh, that's a 100 foot boat, so Tex was there. That's a 860 ton crane that picks this sucker up there. Uh, gentlemen, um, we hope that we'll be able to do business in your port. We would love to come on the wall. We have in the boat ramps that can come to the dock so we need nothing on the dock. We would, we'd love to be here. We'd love to have a sign saying we're here. We, we'd first of all like you to think about the high suit cat, the, the sort of enlarged uh, water taxi as working there. If you had space for us with the, with the 100 foot boat, we'd love to be that here. We th for last comment I want to make to you, we have uh, websites up talking about this, obviously, and, and, and a, a thing on Facebook and that. We're asked only two questions, generally speaking. We have two, people ask a bunch of different questions, but the two questions that they say is, first of all, when's it coming? And the answer is May 15th. And the second question is, are you going to Manio? And we'd love to go to Manio. Thank you very much. For, Happy to answer any questions, and if it's technical, this um, gentleman with even less hair than I would be happy to answer. Peter, I was just going to, I mean, you and I have discussed this briefly, but um, you don't want to station the dinner boat in Mania. It no, would sir. be here like once a month, twice a month. And yes, that sir. would also have basically like a commissary kitchen. So different approved restaurants, I think you had told me, could be approved to do like weddings or do dinner parties or fundraising events. Is that correct? Yes, sir. We have a we have a event manager, and the event manager goes to the restaurants in the in the ports that the boat would come to. Uh, we have no cooking facilities on board. We have warming ovens, a, a catering kitchen. Essentially, what we are is a a large room on you know, on a large boat with with some galleries. Uh, and all the caterers, the, the staff, and so on, come from the kitchen, from, come from the port as well. 
I, I just want you all to know that um, Mr. Gallup here comes from Wanchis, which I believe is a, a sister town, and um, also some of his fellow captains are coming from there too. And just as a plug, um, we have to, by Coast Guard regulation, have a 100-ton captain. Uh, Mr. Gallup has, is a 1,600-ton captain. So this is the quality of the people we're working with. Thank you, Don. Any questions or comments from the board? I have one, too. Um, Tex probably knows better than anybody because he probably has more water time than anybody around here. Um, is there any prospective docks? that are more appealing to you for either of those vessels around Manio? Uh, I've had mine uh, looking like that 65 foot like downtown. On the T dots outside? Oh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, we've, we've been downtown there and the T docks that they have, the boat will fit comfortably on the T dock. Okay. Uh, and it's easy to get to. I run the Crystal Dawn in there a lot of times circled around at the bridge and told them about all the different things going on. Uh, but it will be comfortably there. Uh, we're thinking with the town dock, which is right there on the side by the pump out, I think the high suit cats can probably get in there. Okay. And um, working on ramp situations. Once we get the boat, we will go to each town and you know make sure the ramps fit, make sure everything works right. And we know there's gonna be some trial and error in it, but we'll, you know, we'll work each one out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that will put everybody right downtown within walking distance. Thank you. Uh, along with it, let me say if anybody wants any comments on this from the audience, please wait until the comment period and you're free to speak as you want to for three minutes. So, or to order. I have a question. Um, I know Mr. Thompson mentioned that you're a 501c3. Yes, ma'am. Um, so does that mean the entire operation is a 501c3? Yes, ma'am. Is, is there yes, ma no? Simple as that, yes. So, We're a 501c3. We're a private corporation. We own everything. We run everything that goes into the corporation. And we use anything. Any, we don't imagine there's going to be a profit. We're hoping by the end of the third year we might, have, we might be able to break even. Um, that would be excellent because that would mean that the our, our sponsors in the government based on Mr. Goodwin would expand the fleet and, and we could continue. That's, that's, our, that's our hope. So like a museum, people would pay and, and that would help with the operation. That's correct, ma'am. Yeah. Unfortunately, that, that, that little high suit cap you see there is a gas guzzler at 30 miles an hour. You can imagine two 600 horsepower engines just running along, it runs, it's going to run between 45 and 50 gallons an hour. Okay. But you're going to be doing Elizabeth City in, in an hour 10. And when we think about it, we think that Norfolk City Hall is 42 minutes away from where the boat docked in Elizabeth City. I think with, with Manio as a destination, I can see us doing good business that way. So what would the price of an average ticket be? I'm just curious. We're looking at 20 to $25 a person each way. Wow, that's great. <laughs> we, we think, Amazing. We think it's not just, we, we don't think of it as a trip. We think of it as a waterborne adventure. We, we think being on a fast boat in the Albemarle Sound and a high suit cat would be just great fun. And affordable. Yeah. yeah. But we're trying to make it affordable yeah. because we want the people in the towns not in the water. Great. Oh, very interesting. You don't see any in the foreseeable future funded from the Times to the association or corporation or whatever you've got formed. No, sir. We, we, we made a promise to our towns that we would not ask for money from the towns. Well, I don't know how we could lose. Yeah, right. uh, for uh, just a little information. I was on a committee 30 or 40 years ago, which you're going to be familiar with when I talk about it. This was tried 
that many years ago. Yes, sir. Bunny Saunders. Yes, sir. You you know you know what I'm talking about. I know Bunny very well. I had many meetings in Little City State and Williamston, Plymouth, and wherever the waterfront. And it was a good idea then, but there was trouble with money and funding, as you would well know. Yes, sir. And that was about the only problem anybody saw. And uh, it, it, it fell apart, that's what it did. It didn't go away, it just fell apart. Nobody was mad because everybody thought it was a good idea, but they couldn't come up with the money because the cost was prohibited. And uh, so I'll leave you with that one. And then I had another one. I'm full of history because I'm 90 years old. I go back. Uh, the, uh, what was his name? The engineer of Savannah, Michael, who was, it was local, the mayor's daddy. Anyhow, the former mayor's father was, uh, he started another system, uh, a night cruises with uh, meals, you could get meals on them. And it worked about the first summer and it went away. The only thing I hope is viable and I think you might be on the right track because you're taking your time. Plus, God forbid, you got federal money. Because we're so aloof with federal money now, it's unbelievable, they're giving everything away. And, but at least it'll, it'll, it'll show us that we don't have to put anything in it, and so we can't lose either way. Like I'm saying, I, I'm not against it. Don't misunderstand. It might sound like I'm against it, but I'm not. I, I see it maybe working with this uh, money situation and going to the, the waterfront times because everybody wants to get to the water, no doubt about it. So I'm just going to leave it right there. And, uh, good presentation, and we'll see where you go with it. Thank any you. Any other comments from anybody? Do you need any kind of physical uh, office space for ticket sales or anything like that? I'm sorry, say again, sir? Do you need any kind of physical office space? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. We, we, it, everything, it, we will carry no cash on any of the boats. Everything will be done on, on pads, on credit cards. Uh, and, and we, have, um, we have one of the world's finest organizations uh, doing the IT on this, so we're, we feel very comfortable with that. It's called uh, Go, uh, Fair Harbor is what it's called, and it, it runs 1,800 businesses on the water. So we feel good about that. Um, if I may, I would like to just take a moment to thank, thank Woody and, and Ms. Dickerson, because I, I bought a, a, a file from an apple here, and they just made it well, work. Well, you, you got a good one of you captains is first class because he's a Dare County, and, and if you, after you hear him talk, you know where he's from. <laughs> well, 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 <laughs> well, so is going to be our bartender, and he's bringing the other captains in. Like, yeah. <laughs> I want you to know. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you well, so any, much. Any other questions for the board? That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Mr. Mayor, I'm ready to go if you are. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, a staff update. And um, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to give you all, um, you all get my typical Friday updates, but um, with the folks here in the audience and the listening public, I thought that it, it's probably a good time just to check back in and give folks an idea of where we are on a number of things that we've got going on in town. So. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and start. Woody, are you going to flip for me? Okay. So um, the first update I want to give is um, on the Shalabag Bay lift station. Of course, on Friday, um, in my update, I explained to you all that the lift station is online and has been online and um, seems to be operating well. Um, so the last things of that project are beginning to kind of um, close in. So um, they're framing the parking lot, the remainder of the parking lot today. They've demolished the old 1940s lift station. Um, and they, tomorrow they will be working on the storm, surprise stormwater project that we have in the same area. Um, so 
we are moving forward and it's really exciting. We are, we are finally um, beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel um, and we are super thrilled um, about that. I did, um, or we did, I should say staff did this week, um, purchase some rocking chairs for the porch um, that we have here at Town Hall. So as soon as things are cleaned up around that site, we'll get those rocking chairs on the porch so people can enjoy the view and, and the shade that the porch offers. So um, I've got a couple of pictures here. Um, these are from today. So the one on the left is um, the crew framing up the remainder of the parking lot over top of what was the old 1940s lift station. And then on the right, um, of course, these are um, the large uh, power terminal is the terminal that will um, power, or is powering, I should say now, um, the lift station. And then the ones to the west of it or to the right um, are relocated from where that stormwater pipe um, has failed. So now we're able to get to that pipe to make that um, fix. Um, the plan is to see if we can't um, do a little enclosure around all of this electrical equipment, just a wooden fence um, to make it a little prettier. So um, we're gonna begin working on that um, and making plans to do that um, in the short term. Um, the next update is that the town common restroom, um, the handrails that did not meet code have been removed and are back at the facility to um, be changed to meet the code. And um, then the painting crew will return um, and make some, um, uh, give us a little more paint than what they did on their first visit. So um, the next, um, the next item um, is that we have a number of items that require some tree work around town. And yesterday um, I had a great meeting um, with the contractor who's gonna help us with that. Um, one of the things that was mentioned at our last board meeting and has been on my list is to clean up um, the Bradford pears that they're separate in that fine Queen Elizabeth Avenue. Um, they are in very rough shape. Um, we do um, intend to replace them. Um, and it has been, there's been a large push um, through um, North Carolina forestry um, to replace Bradford pears with native trees. And so that's, that's kind of what we would like to do too. So um, we're going to trim them up for this season, make them look a little bit better. They're kind of straggly um, just to get through one more season and maybe next winter move forward with removing them and moving on. Um, so in George Washington Creek Park, Woody, if you'll just flip, yep, you're good. Um, in George Washington Creek Park, we have this line of vegetation um, that includes these overgrown shrubs, a Bradford pear, a large pine tree, and then additional shrubs um, that are all kind of overgrown. And um, what we'd like to do is kind of start with a clean slate um, at the park. Um, the next picture shows how those shrubs are overgrown and in the evening um, they are much taller than I am which doesn't take much but um, you can't see on the other side of them so it is kind of a safety concern too in, in a place where people are coming and going because the restrooms there so um, we're thinking that we will um, first go ahead and remove um, that vegetation um, lining the street and then come up with a plan of what we can replace it with moving forward. Um, let's see. So this tree was a tree when we developed the town common that we had hoped to save. Um, but it is dead. The mistletoe in it is even dead. Um, and so it is beginning to drop limbs um, on the town common and on Mount Olivet's parking lot. And so um, we need to remove that, and we will be doing that and replacing it. You can see maybe in the picture to the left, there is a, there is a cedar, and so um, the plan is just to replace it with a cedar tree. Um, and then um, this is a picture of the um, lift station on Wingina Avenue, kind of near the high school. Um, it's not been long ago that one of the trees just adjacent to it, took out the fence. Um, and so we need to get that removed and cleaned up. And then um, on the right-hand side picture, you can see that there is a tree um, that is a little bit further away from the tree that fell, but is dead and um, kind of a threat to 
well, the entire lift station, but also our SCADA um, tower there. So um, that's the work that we're going to be moving forward with. Do you have a question? Okay. Um, as far as the tree work is concerned and then where we are replacing things, um, we'll be making a plan at the same time to move forward with that. Um, so um, more updates. Um, there's a lot going on in the community development department and um, Michelle is not with us this evening, but she is watching. Um, so she would want me to tell you, like I did in my Friday update, that we are currently accepting applications for um, the downtown market vendors. Um, the last I heard she had um, more than 25. Um, there are about 42 slots, so um, we, we hope that we have a good wide range of diverse vendors um, and we want those applications to keep coming in. So if you're interested, let us know, give us a call, reach out to me or Michelle, and we'd be happy to um, get your application um, in and help you with that. Um, we are also very active in planning um, for Dare Day and July 4th. Um, and then we currently have three requests for qualifications um, pending. Um, the first um, is to see what kind of interest we could gather on um, having a Chief Manio statue developed. Um, that response date is March the, March the 1st. Um, and then we have two um, requests for qualifications out there um, for wayfinding, um, which has been a big topic. It's been funded in the budget for the last few years. We thought it was important to become a Main Street town. Um, and now that we are there, we have um, released this RFQ. And then along with wayfinding kind of um, goes um, a branding um, plan. And so um, we split those apart because it looks like um, when we were looking at the companies that do this work, that those are things that um, might attract different kinds of companies. So um, we kind of split that apart, but um, nonetheless, those are due on March the 7th. And um, by the email traffic we are seeing, we are going to have a lot of interest in both of those, and we're really excited about that. Um, I did want to note that the Pea Island preservation events that were scheduled for this coming weekend have been canceled. Um, and then um, also that staff um, received word yesterday that the Golden Leaf Grant funds for stormwater um, are open and available again. So we are working to get an application into them um, by their deadline, which is next week, for um, to be considered at their April meeting. So um, we are moving forward quickly. Um, on that one, and, and that would be to apply for funding for the West Side Stormwater Project that we have that is shovel ready to go. Um, we just need to close the gap in funding there. Um, so um, as we head into budget season, there are a few items that we have left to resolve. Um, one of those is the piece of town and property that is on Sir Walter Raleigh Street across from Head Start. Um, in the fall of 2021, the town posted a request for proposals for an affordable housing pilot project at this site, and that posting yielded no responses. Um, it remains in the town's ownership. It's uncleared, as, meaning that there is, it is full of vegetation. Um, it is available for something, um, and the idea has historically been that it's available for housing, um, some kind of housing project. So. Um, it's been surveyed um, and the wetlands have been delineated um, and so that is something as, as we're moving forward for you all to keep in mind. Um, we're ready to, to do whatever it is that you all wish with that property um, and, and get the ball rolling on it. Um, so it, that's the GIS picture and then follows is the survey from the property. How big is that piece? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can find out. Um, the, the survey, <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> so um, I'll, I will get that for you though. How many units was planned uh, during the, after 21? Had, you, so it, I it's think been it was- sur It's been surveyed, right? Yes, sir. So it's four lots or I think six multifamily units that kind of align like a town, like townhomes. Well, probably, are you saying maybe four houses or six or eight? 
multiple years. Townhomes. Yeah. Yes. Well, this piece of property and the project, the housing project, has been drug out. And I, I, I feel like that when you say housing, pro, housing has been talked about and discussed, but something going on that property, something is something. But I thought we secure housing. That housing was the purpose of that property, not something. So I can have a product meet with you and we can clear that up. Or we can just clear it up now. Uh, I think the former manager, James, had drawn the uh, little houses on that. I don't know if that should be in the file. Those were included in the request for proposals that no one responded to, yes. Okay, okay. Well, we have those. Okay. And that um, RFQ Under an acre. that went out home of the health state in North Carolina? It did. It just, okay. But sure, and and that's uh, I bring it up because I'm I'm acknowledging this is one of those things that that we can get moving on. We can, it, what whatever the pleasure. Well, let of me the board let me ask you a good question. I didn't mean it to nobody. Sure. What's holding it up so we'll know? Well, at the time, when the request for proposals went out, it was for multifamily, but nobody responded to build a multifamily project there. So. The easiest way to get homes on that property is to subdivide it into lots and to sell them. But we can continue, we can put another request for proposal out and see if somebody wants to build multifamily units there, or we can subdivide it and create lots for people to build homes on. Well, we need housing more than we need land. I think I'm one of the rare people in Dare County from what I'm reading here and it's still support affordable housing. Uh, I don't want to make nobody mad, but uh, it, there's a mentality out here that seems not in my backyard, but I'm all for it. You can't have it both ways. Sure. Uh, and if we've got chance, I'm saying the time that many of us commissioners have got a chance to get started on something to move forward, then I personally, even though I don't have a vote, think we ought to get moving forward with it. But I that, would just that's up to the board. Well my comment would just be to re advertise it again and just see what kind of feedback we okay. we get. And if we don't get anything then I think we as commissioners need to decide the next move either divide it into smaller lots and have them affordable for people to build what they want to do. But um, yeah I mean it sitting there is not going to do well, much so just try why to, can't we do it both simultaneously can't can we not do that so um put a proposal out there for either or well i, I think one we could probably do very easily as staff the subdividing well, i mean we'll have to hire a surveyor to to do that work but much of the work has been done well, yeah i was just thinking it would um it would hedge our bets on the delay if we if we put the multi housing um, proposal out there and nobody did anything and if we could do them simultaneously at least we would maybe get the um, the regular housing so we could move forward more quickly I think that's what I'm hearing from mayor pro tem sure I think we could work that out and with some assistance from the town attorney. <laughs> is he grimacing? Well, my, my problem is I'm, I'm confused. We all know you can't get builders. We all know you can't get materials, but that's changing now. Uh, materials and costs and everything is dropping so fast it's unbelievable. And why would a builder not want to build a, a, a unit rather than a house? I mean, I know you can't answer it, but I, I would like to find out that question because a karma is a karma. Sure. What, and that's why I bring it forward to you because I think the climate is much different today than it was in the fall of 2021 when this well, request for proposal went out. Was, uh, Ayers was here. Well, I, I just asked. I'm, no problems. Sure. Okay. 
So I think we're all in agreement that she needs to repost it, re-advertise, yeah. and then yeah, I do we too. can see, see how that goes. See and, where we go with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so I've just got a few more is things. The board, is the board all right with doing that? Reposting yeah. and re talking and see where we are and what so, happens? I got a question. So everything as far as the land, the engineer, Army Corps, the engineer, I know that was a, a, a question. We all go with that. That's all been done. Thank you. Thank you. So we're still on go? Yes. Good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is everybody through with that one? Well, I have a few more comments back to my update, but if we're done with a, a housing, I'll Yeah, continue. that's what I say. If okay. you're through with that, just move on. Okay. Um, so most of those projects I've just mentioned um, are things that the town is pursuing, and it's a lot. Um, but what's more is what's happening in the private market. Um, Southern Bank is moving into town soon. PNC left town, and that real estate is available for purchase. The Pioneer Theater is now under new ownership. The Manio Medical Center project has been permitted. The Outer Banks Distilling um, is going to the planning board tomorrow for a building addition. The Elizabethan is under new ownership. The Elizabethan Inn is under new ownership. Um, it appears to be closed right now, um, but staff are, are well aware of, of that happening. Um, and then the subdivision on Bowser Town's new sewer connection um, was constructed just this week and that finished today. So um, there's, there's a lot going on, as Michelle would say if she was here, Manio is on the move. Um, so I just wanted to um, have that conversation with you all, and I think we've got some good guidance on the affordable housing, um, and we'll get to work on that tomorrow. So the next item on your agenda is budget public comment. Members of the public are invited to address the Board of Commissioners on the what would be the 2023-2024 fiscal year budget. Public comment is not intended to require the board to answer any impromptu questions or take any action on items brought up during this period. Speakers will address the board, but will address all comments to the board as a whole and not one individual. Discussions between speakers and members of the audience will not be allowed. Time limits are three minutes per person or five minutes per group. Please come forward to the lectern and identify yourself so that your statements can be recorded. All right. Uh, now is the time for public comment period. Would anyone would like to be heard? Good evening. Michael Bassnight. Uh, first and foremost, publicly, I'd like to say, Melissa, you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Uh, I've been on the other end of your attentiveness, and it's, it's impressive. Second of all, um, the comments that were brought up tonight about the walkable town uh, that Garrett presented, I think, are interesting for the town. Um, but I think also coupled with what we heard from the ferry system, in that the folks who were coming here, and Sherry and Todd and others, we've discussed this in the past, the opportunity uh, for the tourists who are coming, those whom we enjoy having within the town of Manu, who appreciate the history, who want to be here, who are so excited about who we are and what we are as a Main Street town. Um, many of them, quite interestingly, <clears throat> it's always been fun for me as someone who grew up here, but uh, they don't know the difference in the ocean or the sound. But to have been able to go across the country, across the the globe in different cities. One of the most impactful things that I think was uh, evident in towns that I've seen were those who captured that ability to navigate, get around, to take tourists. Moving people is always the problem and somewhere cool to go. Um, parking and moving people is not unique to Manio. But to be able to get there by water, I think is extremely exciting. Um, the fact that you hear the mayor discussing this topic from 40 years ago means that the good idea is still there. And it was either money or as technology, as many cases that were usually the problem. Uh, but to be able to, and I had a discussion with someone from Nags Head Leadership just last week, to be able to even couple with our neighboring villages and townships to be able to move people back and forth, where you bring them to a walkable town like Manio, knowing that there's, as when you go to Hatteras to Ocracoke, 
every 30 minutes there's a way to get back to your car. And you don't have to drive across a bridge or try to find parking, but you come to this town and you're having a good time. You went to a restaurant, you had a great dinner, and you decide, I'll stay a little bit longer. I'll shop a little bit more. I enjoy myself. I love this town. That's what we're after, and I think the technology, I think the funding is finally here to address something that was 40 years ago discussed. Pretty encouraging tonight, but thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Would anyone else like to be heard? Are you still on item four or five? Is it okay to? <clears throat> well, you, at, at item five, you can talk about item four for three minutes. <laughs> Should I wait to item five? No, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Owens, Commissioners, Town Manager Dickerson, Attorney Gallup, and Town Clerk Quitley. I'm Yvonne Farmer, and I reside at 127 Peninsula Drive. You may have heard some comments, positive feedback from my neighbors, but I'm here today to represent myself and my husband. Commissioners, Thank you for denying Salt Meadow Landing OBX LLC's application for a special use permit. Thank you for protecting my health, safety, and welfare, and for maintaining the value of my property, enforcing the intent of the B3 zone requirements, and for honoring our village-like atmosphere. The application added a tremendous amount of additional work on the town staff, and I want to acknowledge the high level of professionalism and integrity that Town Manager Dickerson displayed during the entire process. Thank you for keeping Manio a special place that we all call home. Thank you, ma'am. Would anybody else like to be heard? All right, would anybody else like to be heard? We'll now close public comment period. Mayor and Commissioner comments. I can't hear you. Mayor and Commissioner comments. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't gonna bring this up, but I'm gonna bring it up real fast because it's moving on. I keep alluding to the fact that the mayor does not have a vote. Uh, I don't know when this started, don't know how it got started, don't care. I think it's time that we start thinking about this board that the mayor be given a vote. My two reasons would be that the mayor runs for two years, the commissioner runs for four, number one. Number two, uh, the mayor's office has to put as much money in as the campaign as a regular commissioner does. And uh, he just has the two years to accomplish what he wants to do. If he does the right thing, if he don't, he'll be voted out. So I think it's time we start thinking about now. Let me say this. I almost forgot it. Very important. I am not suggesting that we do it now. I would like the, this committee, the commissioners to be thinking about it at the next election whoever the mayor would be, do it then. Starting out fresh, new, that means I will not have a vote, and that's all right, because I had to work my while sometime to get my way. And it works sometimes, sometimes it don't work. Uh, but I think, I think it's time that the mayor has a vote, just like every other commissioner, because of the timing constraints more than anything else. The mayor has to get as many votes as a commissioner does. And as the old sheriff told me a long time ago, make sure you please 51%. So uh, that's where I stand. And I just would like the under mayor comments to, for y'all to be thinking about it. But I would say that let's don't even think about it until the coming new election so then it'll be fair and nobody can say i'm biased thank you that's all i want to say 
Danny? Um, first, I'd like to apologize to everybody for being late. But family first. Family first. Well, God first. First, <laughs> family first. I'm sorry for being late. Anything else? No. no well, that's understood. Yeah, I know. Sherry? Yes, I have. Um, I have something I wanted to mention. I had a conversation with one of our um, merchants downtown, uh, and but it's a merchant who um, told me that she had the best year she's ever had this year or this past year. So I think the prosperity thing that we're working on is is working. But she had a really good suggestion, and I wanted to bring it to you all. Um, she said that um, she is wondering if we can do some water bottle filling stations around the downtown. So she had, um, she has a, people coming into her shop frequently. They don't know where to get water and um, she also has a concern about using plastic um, bottles, you know, having so many of them out in the universe. So she suggested that we have these water bottle filling stations and maybe even use some other material uh, rather than and plastic. So um, that's what she wanted. And I thought it would be a really good idea. Um, there are a couple of places I could think of that, that would work very well. Um, one of them would be um, the town common. I, I think of families getting out of their cars and wanting to fill bottles for their kids. Um, or maybe over by um, Magnolia Pavilion would be another really good spot. There's also a restroom under, over there. But that's what she um, suggested, and I think it's a really good idea. She had mentioned that she had done a lot of traveling uh, recently, and um, in places that she had gone, of course, they're everywhere. And she said there was a really neat marketing tool. So she'd stay at a hotel, and the hotel would have um, bottles that they would hand out so that people could get them filled, and they would have the um, hotel's uh, logo on it. So it was a wonderful thing for the environment. It was a really good marketing tool for whatever that might be. And um, it was a convenient thing um, for people wanting to visit, especially during the hot summer. So. Excellent idea. A suggestion. Uh, anything else? Um, no, I think not. Okay. Eddie? Yeah, I have a far-fetched idea for maybe somebody from the staff to follow up on. Uh, recent news articles about the uh, life-saving station organelet where that was up for grabs for the aquarium to possibly move it, and it didn't go through, and I'm assuming, again, assuming, so everybody knows that means, that either uh, land area or cost to move it was probably a factor in not moving that to the aquarium. Can somebody from the town see, uh, one, if that would be available for a municipality instead of a state entity? And two, I'm, I'm assuming somebody from the aquarium probably has a cost uh, quote to have that move if they could follow up to see, uh, one, if it's available, and two, what the cost would be to move it. Sure, if we can look into that. That's it. Don? I'm good. Okay. Uh, I'd like, real quickly, I'd like to thank this board for being so innovative and forward moving and not going backwards, but uh, trying to implement the betterment of Manio for its citizens and Manio itself. And like Sherry alluded to, I hear comments all the time that we're moving forward rapidly. And uh, thanks to this board, the whole board, and their thinking and their innovativeness that we're doing this uh, mainly to, for the progressiveness of many of them. I'd like to thank the board personally, and we'll, if nothing else, we'll stand adjourned.